These are the examples for the graphing of linear equations in the CalcPath Geometry Summer Packet. Your learning targets for this are to be able to calculate the slope um, and graph this using a point and slope. Be able to use the slope intercept form to identify key information in the graph. We'll get to that in a little bit. Be able to graph linear equations using X and Y intercepts and be able to graph horizontal and vertical lines. In this first video clip, we'll just be looking at how to calculate slope. Slope is defined, if you remember, as rise over run. If you spell rise with a Y instead of R-I-S-E, that will help you remember that it's the height or the differences of the Ys that goes in the numerator. So when we're looking at this, if I have two points, and this one has an x sub 1, y sub 1 coordinate, and this one has an x sub 2, y sub 2 coordinate, we don't know what the numbers are. The height from here to here is the difference of this height to this height. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1. That would be our rise. Our run is the distance from here to here, which is the dif difference of this x-coordinate and this x-coordinate. So if we know the ordered pairs, the x and y coordinates, we can find the height between them, the rise, by subtracting the y-coordinates, and then the run by subtracting the x-coordinates, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. There are three, well actually, yeah, three, four types of slope. We can have a negative slope where we're going down and right. So this would be a negative slope. We could also reverse that and go up and left. Both of those give you a negative slope. So if you were walking from left to right, you'd be going down the hill, down and right. We could reverse this, though. If we start down here, we could go up and left. It would still give us a negative slope. We can have a positive slope between two points, whereas we're, if we're walking from left to right, we're going up the hill. So we go up and right. Or if we started up here, we could go down and left. And that double negative, the negative of down and the negative of left, would divide to a positive. We also have a flat line. If the ground is flat, it's very easy to walk on. That's a slope of zero. And if we have the impossibly steep, unless you're a rock climber, this is an undefined slope because it has no run, no denominator. So if the denominator is zero, that number is undefined because if I give you six divided by two, you can tell me the answer is three. 3 times 2 is 6. But if I say 10 divided by 0 is what number, I'm actually asking you what number times 0 is 10. There is no number, because 0 times 0 is not 10, it's 0. Any other number times 0 is also 0, not ever 10. So this is undefined. Mathematically, it's undefined. And in terms of so visually, the slope is undefined when we see a vertical line. Here are some examples. In our first example, we are given a graph. Now we have to find exactly where it crosses to make sure that our graph is going to be accurate. It looks like it crosses, where is this? I need an exact cross point right here. It sort of crosses there, but not exactly. It also looks like it crosses here. It kind of looks like it crosses there, but it, it may not probably crosses here. Let's see if that's consistent. So if I start here on the left, I'd have to go up one, two, three, four. So I'd have to go up four and right one, two, three, four, five, right five. So the rise is four and the run is five. Let's see if that's consistent between the next two points. Up one, two, three, four and write one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, five. So it is consistent, a rise of four, a run of five, going from left to right, it's up, so it's positive four-fifths. For the next two examples, we're actually going to use the slope formula, which is to take the y's and subtract them, and take the x's and subtract them. It doesn't matter which point you choose to be your x sub 1, y sub 1, and which one you choose to be your x sub 2, y sub 2, but it does matter that when you've locked them in, you are consistent on how you separate or how you subtract. So y sub 2 is 5. So I have to do 5 minus negative 3. <clears throat> One common mistake is people forget to put the negative, or sometimes they write the minus and just don't, uh, sometimes they just put the minus 3 and don't put the minus sign. The x's are 10 and 4. Since I start with the second point, I do 10 minus 4 in the denominator. Now we remember simplifying for frac fractions from order of operations. I do the numerator and denominator separately and then divide. 5 minus negative 3, that double negative becomes a positive, which will give us 8. 10 minus 4 is 6. And 8 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So this will give us 4 thirds as the final slope. You do need to reduce your slope when possible. For the next one, this is my x sub 1, y sub 1. The second point is my x sub 2, y sub 2. So I'm going to subtract my y's first, 0 minus 0. Then subtract my x's, negative 4 minus 4. In my numerator, 0 minus 0 is 0. In my denominator, negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. I don't have a denominator of 0, so this is a defined number. 0 divided by any number is 0. So this is a 0 slope. When we look at the graph of it, we would expect a horizontal line. Please try this. Pause the video and try this using the slope formula for these three and trying to find the slope from the graph for this one. All right, in your first try it, you should have had 4 minus negative 2 to get positive 6. 5 minus 5 to give you 0. Since 6 is not divisible by 0, this slope is undefined. We would expect a vertical line when these points were graphed. For our next one, 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative divided by negative is positive. This gives us a slope of positive 6 fifths. In the next one, 14 minus negative 4 becomes positive 18. The double negative becomes a plus sign. Negative 2 minus 10 becomes negative 12. Both 18 and negative 12 are divisible by 6, giving us 3 over negative 2, or negative 2 thirds, or negative 2 over 3. All of those are equivalent when there's a negative in the denominator or just in the numerator or on the whole fraction. The entire fraction will be negative. Whereas if there's a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator, then the, double, the division of the negatives makes it positive. For this graph, it's a little tough to see. You might have had a hard time. That's definitely a point. That's not. That's not. That might be. No. Nope. Guess it depends on where you look at your points being. So if I, I probably need to draw some points on there and make it more clear for next year. From here, I'd have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Maybe I didn't need to go down that far. I went down 12, so that's negative 12 for down 12, and write 1, 2, 3, 4. Write 4. <clears throat> well, that's a slope of negative 12 over 4 which is both are divisible by 4, giving us negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3 for the slope. Let's see if that is consistent. Down 1, 2, 3 over 1. Yeah, that looks like a point. Down 1, 2, 3 over 1. That could be a point. 1, 2, 3 over 1. That could be a point. 1, 2, 3 over 1. Yes, the slope is negative 3 over 1, or just a slope of negative 3. The next video clip will go through how to identify the uh, 
uh, the key information in slope-intercept form and use that to graph. 